Hey folks, just want to make a hopefully a quick video showing you just scratching the surface with how you can do your graphing in LaTeX. Totally optional. Um, not only is it optional to use LaTeX in the first place, even if you use LaTeX, it's very much optional um, to do your graphing in LaTeX just because it's a real advanced technique. Um, but you might be interested in this, so I'll put this together. I've got a a file which I'll give you guys uh, that you can take, modify, reuse if you want, um, that has a few examples put together. I want to build one of these examples with you or just tweak it a little bit to show you what each of the bits does. Uh, the most important thing for what we're talking about today is in the preamble, you would want to have somewhere this stuff. Okay, now what is this stuff? This is forward slash PGF plots set. And that's just saying, look, anytime we use PGF plots, which is the graphing package for LaTeX, um, we just don't want to be writing the same stuff over and over again. It's better to write it once in the preamble and then just call on it. The, re the way that we'll be able to call on it is by setting up this style called my axis style. All right. Anytime then when we go into an axis environment and we say, my axis style, it's going to say, oh, you want all of that stuff. That makes it really easy to get nice, consistent graphs. You will have seen this in the tests that I write, for example. I, they all look the same because I'm, I've got a style set up. Okay, so um, we've got the usual stuff here. We've got a title, an author, and we've got a date, graphing and logistic function, blah, blah, blah. My awesome graph is shown in figure one. How does it know it's figure one, figure one? Because we've referred to this label here. Okay, so that can update to figure two or figure 100, depending on how far we go with this. Okay, so what, what's going on here? Well, we've got a figure environment. Okay, so begin figure, that means that we have to end figure down here. All right, and when you're actually drawing these, writing these things into your code, do it all at once. So open your figure environment, end your, or close your figure environment, right? Do it, otherwise you might forget and you'll get an error saying blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's no good. Now we've got an option here in square brackets H. That's just telling me, that's telling LaTeX, when you compile this, I would like to have my figure right here, okay? If we get rid of that, if we uncomment that, what can happen is it can say, oh, yeah, I'd like to put that figure on its own page, which is very common in books and, and stuff. Get the figures away from all the text. Um, but it's not what I want right now. So I would like to put it here. And there are other options that you can read up about on the interwebs about placing figures at, at particular parts of your document. Okay, so now that we've got our figure environment set up, we're going to use the centering command and that's going to make sure that our figure is sitting there horizontally in the page. It's not going to be flush up against the left or flush up against the right. That's what we want. Then inside all of that, it's a Russian doll situation. Now we've got a ticks picture environment. Okay, so begin ticks picture and end ticks picture. Now I can use a ticks picture environment because somewhere up in my um, preamble, I've got, um, well, probably PGF plots is, is loading it, I would say. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure because I've put use package PGF plots, it's gonna automatically allow me to use ticks picture environments. Okay, now that we've got a Ticks picture environment set up, we're going to use an axis environment and that's sitting inside. So begin axis environment and then of course we have to end our axis environment. Okay, this is really where all the magic happens. Okay, this is where we actually do our graphing. So uh, let's break it down. After we've opened up our axis environment, we need to show the options that we would like. So we put our options in square brackets, and these are the options that I would like. Notice how we're putting each individual option on its own line. That's to, number one, to aid code readability. You're trying to aim for really, really neat code. 
that's going to force you to think in a clearer way and it's going to allow you to write better, better mathematics as well. Secondly, if everything's on its own line, we can easily comment stuff out. So suppose I don't want this information. I can comment that out and recompile and you can see that now I don't have a very wide figure anymore. So that's a good way of discovering what everything's doing. So you can see here, I've put in a command, I'm saying, look, I would like the width of this, this graph here to be the text width. Okay, so if I compile that, it's going to say, all right, he wants a nice wide graph. That's made it too high. And that's why I put in this height command as well. I want the height to only be half of the text width. The text width is, you know, that nice solid block of text that we're getting. That's that width there. Okay, so you can compile that. Um, what else do we have? Well, I've said what the ma maximum Y value should be on my graph. I'm saying two and a half. You might not like that. You might like 12 and a half. Okay, and in that case, effectively, you're going to squeeze down your graphs because you're having more numbers appearing on the Y axis. Okay, or you could have any other thing. You could also have a minimum Y value. So you could say, look, I would like my Y min, my minimum Y value on my axes to be minus six for whatever reason. So it's highly tweakable. Now we're going down to minus six here. I'm not feeling that though, so I want to get rid of that. Legend entries is where we put this information here. Now I've got one because I was just mucking around with it off camera uh, there that's not really relevant. We've got two things that we would like to appear in the legend, namely y equals one over one plus e to the minus x and y equals two over one plus e to the minus x. That's where they appear here. But obviously you could put any old thing that you want. So you could put um, what did I do there? <laughs> Something crazy again. Um, you could put in the integral from zero to one of f of x. Um, dx like that. That's fine for now. And then that would change and you get something different over there. That's not what I want though. I would like to have what the graph actually is. So I'll put that there. Okay, so now that we've set up our axis um, or our axes more fittingly, then we can actually start plotting the graphs that we want to plot. Okay, so you can see that I've got two here. The first one is this one where the limiting value is one. The number on top right is the limiting value. It's the carrying capacity. So if we're talking about population, we're heading towards a population of one, but we're never quite getting there. If we double that, the graph's going to be much higher and we're heading now to a, a Y value of two. That's basically the effect of that parameter there. Okay, so I will switch off everything that's not 100% relevant right now. So we will just focus in on this first logistic function. So I'll comment that code and I'll re recompile here. So what are these options? So we, we're going forward slash add plot and then we've got our options here. The domain one I think is self-explanatory. It's just saying look plot this from minus four to positive four. It does keep going on forever but we, when we're actually drawing it we've got to stop it and start it somewhere. Um, of course, if you wanted to go out to positive 14, you could do that. That would be fine. And then you go further out that way. But I think minus four to four is working pretty well. So what is this stick uh, doing? Well, we could comment that out. The default behavior is to get a nice sort of thin line. I don't think that looks very good um, when you're plotting this type of thing. So I think thick works well. Or you could even go crazy. You could say very thick or ultra thick. Let's see what ultra thick looks like. It's a little bit full on, I reckon. So thick seems to be about the right spot. This one here is telling what sort of arrowheads would we like. If you don't want any arrowheads at all, you get rid of them and they're going to go. But obviously in this case, it's going in both directions. If it was just going in one direction, you know, if there was a finite endpoint on the left-hand side, then you'd do it like that. But in this case, it's going in both directions. Okay, now that we've got that, 
we've set up our axis. There's a whole hunch, bunch of other things you could do here. You could have like a dotted line and it could be gray or yellow or whatever you want. It's going to change things accordingly. If you're interested, go check out the PGF plots axis options and add plot options. Okay. Now that we've got that, we've got to actually put the formula of the thing that we're trying to graph here. So the thing that we're trying to graph is of the form 1 plus e to the minus x to the minus 1 power because it's 1 over that. Okay. That's the way that I would set it out. It's a little bit unfortunate because in this formula environment here, we're sort of using a different syntax. Up here, if we wanted to put things up into the sky, we used curly brackets. Here, we're using brown brackets. That's really unfortunate, um, but that's just the way it is. Okay, so we've got our first one. I'm happy to now plot that like that. Now, suppose you were plotting a surge function. Then, um, you know, instead of that, you would have, let's see if we can put it together. A real simple one would be, um, what is it? X e to the minus X. So X times the exponential of minus X. Let's see what happens there. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't look so good, does it? Um, now, there's there's a whole bunch of things going on there. Well, first of all, we don't want our domain going from minus 4 to 4. Maybe positive 4 to 4 might be better. We would need to change it to a single-headed arrow. Okay, because it's, it's terminating there. Um, and, you know, we're not really capturing the, the bump too well there. Are we? So how could we fix that up? Um, well, I guess we could fi fix it by changing our maximum Y value. That would, in, a, in effect, sort of stretch it out. And we, with trial and error, we'd have to play around a little bit and see where do we start getting what we want. That's kind of all right. Now, you see what's happening here. We've, we've actually, our legend is bumping into the graph now which is not what we want. So maybe uh, the legend position should now be in the northeast. That's working better for me. Or if you want it right off the graph so there's absolutely no risk of bumping into it, you could put it in the outer northeast if you wanted to. Kind of like that. All right, so these are all things that we can play around with. Um, I want to go back in time here a little bit and get back what I had before. So yeah, I think it's another case of once you get your hand, your head around this, it's not too bad, but the learning curve is intense. Um, but it does come. It does come in. I promise you when I first started looking at this, I was thinking, what is this stuff? But now it, it all makes sense. Okay, I've put an asymptote on here. How do we do that? Well, we use the draw command. So forward slash draw, then we want our options. I'm going with a dashed line, but you could go with a dotted line, um, like so. Although with my eyesight, it's not really working for me, so I'll go dashed. And then where are we drawing from and where are we drawing to? I'll get rid of this node just for a moment. We're going from minus 4, positive 1, to positive 4, positive 1. Okay, that seems right. If you wanted to bring it in, it could be like minus 3, positive 1, to positive 3, positive 1. Um, how do we label it? Well, that's where the node comes in. So I want it kind of near this minus 4, positive 1 coordinate. I'm going to put a node. I'm going to put my node above. Uh, and then in curly brackets, what exactly do I want? Well, in maths mode, I would like y equals 1. That's working for me. Um, there's a lot that could be done here. So, you know, if you wanted this to be shifted over a little bit, you could sort of 
yeah, I want it above, but I want to X shift it, shift it in the X direction, like four capital M's across, so four M. That's a good unit of measurement in typography. How, how wide is a capital M? Let's have four of those. Okay, we could do that. You could shift it up. You could Y shift it as well. So let's Y shift it. Well, I'll shift it down first. So I want to Y shift it down like five lowercase X's. You could do it in inches, centimeters, peakers, whatever you want. Sorry, that shifted it up. <laughs> what did I say? Shifted it down. Shifting it down would be minus, minus five X's. So down that way. So you can you can tweak all of this stuff. Uh, you can go below left. Um, and another cool way that you can do it, by the way, is you could say where you would like your anchor to be. So if, imagine you're out in a ship and you, you're setting anchor. You could put an anchor down. And you could say that the anchor is in the northeast. So if the anchor is in the northeast, we are down here in the southwest. Does that make sense? <laughs> There's a lot of ways you can do this. It's really cool. Um, so that's that. And then there's another one here. And basically, once you've got this code, you could just copy paste it and put your new code in and then just change the relevant bits. So because this one is going to be twice as high, it's going to be two times 1 plus the exponential of minus x to the minus 1 power. Okay, I'm doing it in red so we can differentiate it. Um, and then, you know, we've got that as well. So let's check it out. How does it look? Yeah, it's kind of working. Now, something to, to observe here, and then I'll call it because I'm I've gone longer than I thought I would. Notice how this node I've put after the four comma two coordinate. That's because I wanted to have it on the right hand side. Okay, so if I'd put it after the four comma two coordinate, sorry, the minus four comma two coordinate, it would be over there on the left hand side. Um, so that's that. Anyway, hopefully you guys found that useful and um, you can have a play around with it if you want.